Hey friends, Rachel here again. So good to be with you. Are you guys ready for today's lesson? I really hope so because we're going to hear one of my favorite Bible stories and we're going to talk about gentleness, strength, and how they go together. So if you're ready, get your dancing shoes on, stretch it out, and I'll see you right back here afterward. You're my calm in the chaos, my peace in the war. You speak light into darkness, you tell me I'm yours. Only you, Jesus, are in control. You are my every heartbeat, every breath that I breathe. You're all because what you do today can change the world around you. There's lots to do in the summer. Sometimes it can get crazy. And sometimes you just wanna go outside and relax and blow some bubbles. Look at them just floating in the air, not a care in the world. And sometimes if you're really gentle, you can catch one. Oh. <laughs> and if you're not, bye bye bubble. Bye bye bubble. Fact, the bigger the bubble, the more gentle you have to be. You can't be too crazy or you'll just end up with soap all over the ground. <laughs> but when you slow down, Think about what you're doing before you do it and don't lose control. You can make some big bubbles. In today's story, we'll hear about a time when the all-powerful, incredibly strong son of God chose to be gentle. I'll see you soon. 
The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. As Jesus traveled teaching and healing people, he grew more and more popular. Crowds gathered everywhere he went, and people clamored for his attention. Jesus' friends must have felt like they were on a wild ride some days. This is all getting out of hand. Some days we hardly get to talk to him. It's like we're just here for crowd control. Jesus has the Pharisees going after him at every turn, and half of Galilee wants him to heal a blister or fix a sore toe. As Jesus and his friends traveled toward Jerusalem, they stopped at a town across the Jordan River. Once again, religious leaders tried to heckle Jesus. They won't leave him alone. After the Pharisees finally left, the disciples gathered around Jesus. At least he gets a break now. Yeah, and we get to actually hang out with him. Just us. No loud, demanding crowds. To ruckus. <laughs> Jesus' friends looked up to see another group coming their way. Moms, dads, and a whole group of small children. You gotta be kidding me. We're not running a babysitting service. They probably want Jesus to bless their kids. He's been busy all day with leaders and, and, and people with real needs. He doesn't have time for a bunch of snotty toddlers. Many families must have had the same idea because they all made their way towards Jesus. Some kids ran around shrieking while others held tightly to their parents and watched with big eyes. Please, could Jesus bless my little girl? A and my boys, if he could just lay his hands on them. I brought my little granddaughter. Hold it, hold it. Jesus can't see you right now. He's tired, not to be harsh, but He's got bigger fish to fry. You know who you're asking to talk with? I, I saw Jesus face down the wind and waves. He can heal sickness and turn one meal into a feast for 5,000. And you want him to waste his time singing Itsy Bitsy Spider. When you put it like that. Jesus heard the commotion. He quickly came forward to see for himself. Sorry, these people want you to bless their kids. Yeah. They're about to turn this place into a circus. Don't worry, we'll get them out of here. Stop. What? Let the little children come to me. For reals? Don't keep them. God's kingdom belongs to people like them. Um, okay. Change of plan. Go ahead and bring your kiddos. Line up. Let's keep this orderly. There was something about Jesus that made every single child feel safe. They crowded around him laughing and talking and asking all of their questions at once. Jesus, I hooded my finger. See my boat? It goes swish, swish on the water, but my daddy won't let me fish with him at night because it's past my bedtime and do you like rabbits? Jesus, I want to play hide and seek. Children were considered the least important people of all at this time, but Jesus stopped everything to welcome them with his arms open wide. He cradled wide-eyed babies. He scooped up wiggling toddlers to sit on his lap. Jesus may have even played hide-and-seek with a few rambunctious three-year-olds. I think he's actually enjoying this. He's really good with them. It's been way longer than he spent talking to the Pharisees. Jesus, who could command a wild storm to stop with the power of his voice, chose to gently rock a fussy baby. He blessed a four-year-old as she told her epic story, and he may have even healed a few skinned knees. After a time, Jesus looked up to smile at his friends and the grown-ups who watched. What I'm about to tell you is true. Anyone who will not receive God's kingdom like a little child will never enter it. Us? Like kids? Jesus was not just showing the crowd that children were important. He was actually telling them that they needed to come to him just like those kids, full of imagination and ready for adventure. And with complete trust, that all of their needs would be met. Looks like those kids need a couple more people for tag. I'm in. Why not? Jesus made it clear to his followers that every single child is valuable to God and that God can give you the strength to be gentle.
I think we can all agree that Jesus is strong, right? He healed the sick. He stopped a thunderstorm. He brought people back from the dead. And yet, Jesus took time to care for little kids. That takes gentleness. Gentleness is something we all need from time to time. Don't get me wrong, there's there's a time for crazy. <laughs> then there are times when you need to be gentle, like when you're around babies or little kids, or when you're around someone who's sick or even someone who's really sad. Being gentle means taking the time to think about someone else's needs. It's slowing down, thinking about what you're doing before you do it and not losing control. It's kind of strange, but it actually takes strength to be gentle. Uh, like when you're super excited, woo! Oh, or when you're angry or frustrated. Uh, you have to be strong to really get yourself under control. And then, you can make a big difference in the world. And if you don't think you've got enough strength to be gentle, check this out. When you put your trust in Jesus, God gives you the Holy Spirit to help. So listen closely. Here's the one thing to remember today. God can give you strength to be gentle. See, you don't have to go crazy to make waves, but it's still fun sometimes. Don't you just love that story? I love that Jesus didn't stop the kids from coming to him. He wanted to see all of them and hear what they had to say and help them with their troubles. It took a lot of strength for Jesus to stand up to the people around him to be gentle to those kids. So as you go through the week and you talk to your friends, you talk to your brothers and sisters and your parents, I want you to remember that God can give you the strength to be gentle and being gentle can change the world around you. So I'll see you next week. Bye guys.